I did forget one. Which one did I forget? <laughs> Every time. Is that better? Okay, you have them in order, right? Let's find the median. Hopefully you've done this already. The median, the sensor, we have an even number of values. You see that, right? We have an even number of values. The median's not, not apparent to us, but we do have these two that are right in the middle. Now, in other cases, it was pretty easy to find the median because you're like, oh, well, what's right in between uh, four and five. Well, that's 4.5. That's pretty easy. What's right in between six and eight? Well, that, that's seven. That's not a, that's a no-brainer. But, but here, you are going to have to know how to average those to find the median, right? So we do the same exact thing. We add them together. We divide by two in this case. What's the median for this range of data? 0 0.915. Did anybody else get 0 0.915? So we add them together. Divide by two and we will said that we get 0 0.915. Perfect. That's our median. How many people understand the idea of a median? Okay, good. Now, why in the world would we use a median? I asked you to think on this for a little while. And this should have given you a real good clue as to why we use the median when I added that huge number over here, when I added that one or when we look at what this 5.4 does to the mean as compared to the median. I want you to notice this. Okay, look at the board with me real quick. Look what happens to the five, what the 5.4 does to the mean that it doesn't do to the median. Watch. If I change this 5, let's say that for some reason you came across like a pot of gold or whatever, and so that change is now in your car, and for this month, instead of having $5.40, you had like... <coughs> Three hundred and ten dollars and five cents. Okay, gold. That's awesome. Is this going to change the mean? The mean. So the mean, absolutely, because you're going to add it right here, and this mean's going to go way, way, way up. Do you see what I'm talking about? Is it going to represent most of your data? I mean, if you ignore that one, what you have here is like, I don't know. I'd say somewhere around 70, 75 cents a day, maybe 65 cents a day, if you ignore that 5.4, if you ignore this one. But as soon as you add this thing in there, some of you are zoning out, pay attention to me. As soon as you add this one in there, it explodes your mean. Now, if I change this 5.4 to the $310.05, does the median change? No, it doesn't. What's that, what's that mean for us? Well, that means that... This 310, we're going to consider that an outlier. What an outlier is, is a data value that is way outside the norm for most of the other data. So notice how 310 or 412 is way off from other numbers. You see that? And the, the 310 is way off from other numbers. That's called an outlier. It's, it's not even close to the majority of your data. A mean is very affected by outliers because you're adding up all the data pieces. A median's not. Because you just put them in order. So this is why they do median household income and median home value rather than mean. Because people like Bill Gates throw it way off for everybody. I mean, he, he makes billions, well, he used to. He used to make billions of dollars, right? Do I make billions of dollars? Not that you know. No, I don't. I make thousands of dollars, but not billions of dollars. So his, his income, if you did the mean, would make it seem like everyone was getting more than they actually are. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if you add it in there, but divide it across the whole population like we do, they use median because if it's all in order, those outliers to the far, like, richest 2%, 1% are excluded, and those at the far uh, left, the lowest income, are excluded, and we get what most people are. That's why they use median. Same thing with home values. They exclude the low, the median excludes the really low ones and the really high ones. They don't really play a factor in there. Do you get the idea here? You get a better picture of what's actually going on. In some cases, if there's lots of outliers, by using the median. So that's right. So one little note here, the median is not affected by outliers. The mean is affected by outliers.
I know I'm hanging that one out there is, but it, what I mean is, is effective outliers. I just don't want to write it. Do you have a good picture about the mean and the median at this point? Feel pretty good about that. Good. There's one more. We really don't use this one in, in this class. Uh, the last one is the mean, the median, and the mode. Yeah, it's the mode. The mode means the most. What happens the most in a data set? That, that's really it. If a data value occurs more than any other, uh, that's called the mode. say the mode is the most commonly occurring data value. four options. You can have a single mode. You can be what's called bimodal if two values occur with the same frequency. You can have multimodal, which is like three or more that have the same frequency. Or you can have no mode. No value occurs more than one. So it's really our only options here. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's do that, that first, the first one that we have, the uh, 5.4 one. Bless you. Does that have to be in order for you to find the mode? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just one that the number that happens the most. <clears throat> Does this one have a mode? Yes. What's the mode here? Next one. Does this second data set have a mode? It doesn't have a single one, but it has how many is it is it bimodal or does it have three modes? Two. Two or three. A lot of people get confused here. They go, oh, but wait a second. This one's also repeating. Doesn't that count as a mode? And the answer is no, it's not. It's the most repeated value. And if there's two that happen the most amount of times, then you count both. But you don't count everything that repeats as the mode. That doesn't make any sense. So here we'd say, yeah, this is bimodal. In this case, the modes are 27. That occurs three times. 55, that occurs three times. 88 only occurs two times. That doesn't count. How about the last one? Any mode there? Uh, you can put no mode. Or just do that, that's the empty set. There's nothing, there's no mode going on there. Okay, one more thing about just kind of kind of rounding. Um, and I think you did it here. You guys actually did it there. Uh, there's something called the rounding rule in, in statistics. Here's the rounding rule. The rounding rule is it's kind of a rule of thumb. You don't have to stick with it all the time, okay? And if you give me a little bit off on your, your test or your homework, I'll be like, okay. Uh, but here's the rounding rule. The first part is the rule of thumb. The second part, you have to do this. The first, first part's this. You're always going to round a number to one decimal place more than what they gave you. You're going to round a number to one decimal place more than what they gave you. For instance, 
If you're given whole numbers, we're going to round to the 10. If you're given, like here, two decimal places, notice how the answer is in three decimal places. Do you see that? You round to one more value than one more decimal place than the value you're given. That's the whole idea of the rounding rule. The second part is this. We're going to deal with formulas where we're using numbers and then using those numbers in a different formula and using those numbers in a different formula. If you keep rounding every single time, you are going to be off drastically at the end of our problem. So here's the deal. In our class, you can't round until the very last step. I'm your head that you're with me on that. You cannot round until the very last step. So if we're using the mean in a formula, we actually can't use that. We're going to use a much longer value because it's more accurate. Because uh, if you use this and we have to reuse that, your error is multiplied. So the two rules for rounding are you give me one more decimal place than the values you're given. That's at the end of your problem because you never round until the very end of your problem. How many people are with me on this? Okay, good. That's the two rounding rules. Now, we can find also the mean of a frequency distribution, like what you guys made up on your homework. We can find the mean of that. Now, it's going to be an approximation because did you notice on your frequency distributions or frequency distribution, that's hard to say, distributions in general, that when you make up a frequency distribution, you have a class from like, we had 18 to 21-year-olds, right? And we put like 25 people in that class. Was everyone in there the same age? No, we had like 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds and 20-year-olds and I think 21-year-olds or something. We had all those ages in there and there was, there was different people in, in the, that class. All, maybe all 25 of you were uh, ranged between 18 and 22, or 21, excuse me. But when we put it in a frequency distribution, we, we lose that, that, uh, that information. We don't know how many exactly 21-year-olds there are. So what I'm about to show you is an approximation, but we can find a very close average for a frequency distribution. And here's how we do it. So we're going to start off with a frequency distribution over here. Here's one that I already had made up, so we use this. Bless you. That was a good one. Yeah, you really let that one out. Awesome. You always get a kick out of people's sneezes, because I'm a teacher, I hear lots of different sneezes. And you all have very interesting sneezes, you know that? I'm sure mine are interesting too, but it's, everyone's got, oh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, make up a table like this one. Yeah, that'll be good. And this is another age 